Prime Minister Narendra Modi and United States President Barack Obama want to reinvigorate the languishing India thus ties. Modi obviously believes that his development agenda needs the United States propping and the improved relations with the United States will give India a more leverage with both friends and adversaries. Obama appears persuaded that Modi means business and that his agenda will yield economic opportunities for the United States and solidify the strategic ties at a time of rising challenges to its global hegemony. In seeking to swiftly galvanize the relationship the two leaders have generated pressure upon themselves to produce tangible results quickly. Obama's visit, therefore, has to be a success to justify the considerable political capital that both sides have invested in it. The roadmap for revitalizing ties was drawn up during Modi's September visit. Observers will be looking for advances during Obama's visit, despite the short period between the two visits. Implementation will require either time-consuming processing or difficult negotiations, or policy, legislative and administrative responses, accompanied by internal political debates in some cases. Some goals may not be achieved. Moreover, a balance in our external relations will have to be maintained. India's bilateral trade cannot be increased from $100 billion currently to $500 billion in the foreseeable future. Modi's quest for more ease of access to the United States market for Indian IT companies may not succeed in view of Obama's position on outsourcing and the United States' unresponsiveness on issues of hike of H-1B and L-1 visa fees, movement of professionals and the totalization agreement. India needs huge investments for modernizing its poor infrastructure. The signing in Washington earlier this month of the Indo-US Investment Initiative and the decision to establish an infrastructure collaboration platform demonstrate a desire to leverage the United States technology and services but quicker results could come from engaging more internationally competitive partners. The Trade Policy Forum met last November with the United States Trade Representatives USDR's participation, but without any visible breakthrough. The USDR's position on local manufacturing content requirements remains querulous, even though without this stipulation we cannot easily make in India. The Working Group for Addressing IPR Issues has met but how India's position that it is not violating the WTO agreement on trips and contentious the United States demands can be reconciled is unclear. The contact group for implementing the India as civil nuclear deal has also met. Although there are signs that the United States government may accept some form of supplier liability if a practical way to limit it in terms of cost and duration can be found, the chances of resolving this vexed issue in time for Obama's visit are unclear. Obama's offer to reinvigorate the higher education dialogue can be taken up seriously only if the government can move forward on the Foreign Education Providers Bill. The proposal to establish the Global Initiative of Academic Networks GN under which India would host up to 1,000 American academics each year to teach in centrally recognized Indian universities is an imaginative proposal, but one requiring complex administrative processing for success. In Washington, India and the United States announced a new hand-in-hand -hand strategic partnership on climate change which opens us to increase to the United States pressure prior to and at the on climate change conference in Paris in December. After reaching the political agreement with China, the United States will seek concrete emission reduction commitments from India, connected less with the merits of India's case, and more with the commercial interests of the United States. During Obama's visit the 2005 framework for the India's defense relationship will certainly be renewed for another 10 years with more ambitious programs and activities. The United States is keen that at least one project is approved under the Defense Technology and Trade Initiative DTTI. While the United States claims that its proposals under the DTTI have the green light from all those who control technology exports in the country, it can be doubted whether it will be as liberal in transfer of technologies as it claims. From Defense Minister Manohar Parikar's recent public statements, however, it appears some positive announcement under the DTTI may be made. This will bolster the strategic partnership. During Modi's visit Obama affirmed that India met the missile technology control regime requirements and was ready for membership in the nuclear suppliers group, but that the United States has not been active in promoting India's case. It is likely that the United States is linking this to a resolution of differences on nuclear liability and administrative arrangements on reprocessing under the India's nuclear deal. On terrorism, the Taliban's omission from the list of terrorist networks that figure in the joint statement issued during Modi's Washington visit is striking. It shows that on the Afghanistan issue the United States is ignoring Indian concerns about this Pakistan-linked extremist group being politically accommodated in Afghanistan's power structure to facilitate the United States' withdrawal from that country. At Washington, Modi and Obama stated their intention to expand defense cooperation to bolster regional and global security. How regional security can be promoted if the United States continues to arm Pakistan is open to question. With regard to global security, the commitment expressed in the joint statement to work